So the second vault that we're gonna work on is known as the Kong vault. So like all vaults, you wanna keep the momentum. Now, the biggest mistake I see on the approach of a Kong vault is the idea that people wanna do a two-footed takeoff. Now, contrary to belief, this is actually just gonna do you more harm than it is good. You will feel like both legs naturally will give you more power, but the problem is that we are actually stopping our momentum completely. So by using two legs, both knees are getting shot forward. So what you wanna work on is what I call a hurdle and basically step into it. So the way you do this, I'm gonna exaggerate it, is it steps, I go in like that. As compared to going so again, keep your momentum. I'm gonna go a little bit faster now. I go here, it goes up. Now if you're struggling with this concept, basically just think skip. So as I'm approaching the vault, I'm gonna count my steps out ahead of time. But as I'm approaching it with the last final stretch there, I'm gonna think left, right, left. It should sound like this, real quick. So as I go, it goes left, right, left, and up. Notice how the last two are quicker. It doesn't mean I'm stutter stepping, it just means I'm feeding into it. Now, here's the purpose even deeper than that as you're starting to approach the execution. What I want you to notice now is notice how the foot that is in back, my right leg, is gonna kick up, and my left one is the one that's actually propelling me over the wall. So as I run in, it's here, and it goes up like that. Purpose being is if one leg and one hip, this in case being my right, if I know that it is over the wall, I know that I can pull the second leg up to it and not have to worry about clipping my feet or hitting any other body part. So, now come at it and look at it from that perspective. As I come in, my foot goes up, my hips are over the vault. I don't have to worry about wondering if I'm gonna clear that distance. So, another thing to keep in mind about the approach is if you're wondering, am I jumping too far forward? Am I leaning too far back? How do I know how high to go? Again, pay attention to those legs. If you focus as whichever foot is in behind, initially is putting power into the front, the left is gonna jump up while the right leg is shooting up towards the sky. So this will allow you to know if you're high enough, this leg will allow you to know if you're high enough, whereas this leg is what's gonna shoot you over. So this is what deals with height, this is what deals with forward momentum, and notice how my chest is naturally leaning forward. I'm not trying to Kong vault like this. It won't work, okay? So as you come in, shoot all forward. The idea is to pick your target out there and get to it. So the more momentum, the more commitment, and generally taking your center of gravity and shooting that way and relying on your triceps to use the rest of the power to get you through. And this is a great way to find how comfortable you are with vaults is by keep practicing the approach, finding your speed, working it in, and just stopping yourself like that. You'll be working muscles in a static function, meaning they're not using work, they're just holding a position. And you'll start to understand how to go into this next section, the execution of the Kong ball. So here's the execution of the vault. Basically what I want you to keep in mind is triceps are the most important muscle in this. Muscle, most important. As far as keeping momentum and speed, that's from your initial run up and how well you do the hurdle into the vault. Again, not too legged, learn that hurdle. It's gonna save you a lot of time and you're gonna be able to progress with the Kong a lot faster. So let's take a look at what happens when my hands go on. Now I want you to pay attention to what my hands are doing. As I approach, the hands go on and they push. So what's happening with my hands is this. So my hips are up, my left leg's jumping, my hands are going on. Now in my head, I'm gonna think straight arm. My body's not gonna let me to do that. 
but by keeping straight arm is another way to build confidence that you will be high enough for the wall so your feet don't clip, etc. So you do this by, as your hands go on, you imagine that you're actually gonna bend your fingers like this. Much how when you jump, your feet actually have to point. You don't wanna jump like this. You don't get anywhere, right? So same with your hands. It's gonna push. Really exaggerate that in your head. The more you exaggerate, the more it forces your body to do what it needs to do. It obviously won't look like this, but it's the right idea. Okay, so with the hands pushing, as well as thinking about your arms coming in straight, so it's like straight push, straight push. Now, your arms are naturally gonna bend, like I said, but if you focus on them being straighter, the bend will be here as a pair to here. So, one more time, take a look at it. Pay attention again. My hands go on and they're gonna push. And I pretend arm straight. Now the arm straight is what's gonna get you distance. The hands pushing is what's gonna get you height. So, one last thing about the execution. When your feet have left the ground and your hands are the only thing touching the object, the idea as far as how wide they go, you don't want them here. Unless you can somehow miraculously get both your feet through there, teach me. But what I'm gonna suggest is going shoulder width apart. Some people do a little bit closer, others do a little bit wider, but somewhere in this range. Now, as far as this is a pretty thin surface and my hands actually take up the whole thing, but much like the precision, how you want your toes on the edge, same with the fingertips. Get your fingertips on the edge. What this allows you to do is that if you find that the momentum wasn't enough, you can use your fingertips to pull yourself through. Now, the wider the surface, let's pretend that it goes out double. I don't want to Kong from here as much as I would want to Kong here. So however far the obstacle that you're Konging over, you want your hands on the furthest side from you. And that is the execution of the Kong ball. So let's go to the landing. Now we're gonna talk about the landing of the Kong ball. What you do after you've done all the pushing with your hands, your feet are completely off the ground. At this point, nothing is touching the object. Your next goal is to land this thing. So, this is what the landing should look like. So, basically, as I push off, similar to how we were teaching the precision earlier, how you want, so if this is the precision, right, it comes out, you got to pull your abs to pull your knees up. Your arms are going to come behind. So notice how similar this is. The precision starts from here, whereas a Kong vault comes in, it pushes through, and look where you're at. You're already in the exact same position as when you're loading to land a precision. So again, it's going to Kong. Hands are going to do the pushing. It's going to come through. You can use your abs to pull your legs up. Look for your ground the whole time and then load it just like a precision. Best two things to do now that we're dealing with momentum is either roll out or do your monkey slap. So, like everybody out there, some favor technique, others favor strength. What you wanna do is master both. So what I'm gonna teach you how to build the strength and a little bit of technique of the Kong vault and improve your confidence with it, something that I call the monkey vault. Now, I'm gonna teach you two different variations of this. The first one is obviously the more simple one, and then the second one is gonna require a lot more strength. So, the monkey vault, I'm gonna put my hands just as if I was gonna Kong it. The only difference is now I'm gonna take a couple steps back. I'm gonna jump up just enough to get myself elevated to simulate that idea of getting your heels up. And then I'm gonna use only my arms and mostly triceps and the pushing of the hands to get myself on top of this box. So I go here, I jump, and I push to get myself on top. And a good way to get down, if you feel comfortable, is to do it in reverse. Remember, resistance training, doing things in reverse, are what build muscles faster. So, like once again, I'm going to start here. I'm going to jump just enough. You can also do the split-legged if you want to even build more technique. And I'm going to get myself on top of this. Little jump, big push get myself up on top. You can also try this on even lower surfaces. If it's a lot lower, just squat down and use your arms even more. 
Now, the second variation of this, we're gonna bypass our feet going on and get completely over this thing the same way. So I'm gonna go here, and this is really gonna simulate the pushing of the arms in the Kong, so the execution of the Kong. This will help with that. You can go here. You're gonna shoot your head up and keep your chest in a 45 degree angle, and then use your triceps to pull yourself through. It goes here, and really push and come through. Now, because we have the lack of momentum, having your fingertips on the edge is gonna allow you for an extra pulling motion. So you're actually pulling the wall behind you. So one more time. I'm gonna come here. I got my fingertips on the edge so I can pull myself. Chest is gonna shoot at 45 degrees. Head is gonna be up looking at the target. And I'm gonna jump and pull. And that is how you do a Kong ball.